Nickel is a pretty cool element and I don't think enough people give it credit. So today I'm gonna transform metallic nickel into a more reactive and useful form of it, pyrophoric nickel. Pyrophoric nickel is more reactive than nickel and will literally burn on contact with air. It's used under the name of rainy nickel as a catalyst for hydrogenations in organic chemistry. This way it can reduce many molecules like benzene to cyclohexane and make meth from the reductive amination process. Let's start with the reagents for today. We first need some quite pure nickel, and I just bought mine from the Holy Land of Poland. Then, some hydrochloric acid, also known as muriatic acid. And additionally, you can use some hydrogen peroxide to speed up the reactions, but it's not necessary. And I forgot to put it on camera, but later I will also use some oxalic acid. My source of nickel was those kinds of coins, but they weighted around 17 grams each. But for this preparation, I would prefer to use less. So I first tried cutting one of them with the pliers but that didn't work. Then I tried to make it flat with the hammer, but nickel is exceptionally hard. Finally, I decided to use the saw, this worked pretty well. Wow! Hell yes! Finally! Oh, that's a cute shiny cat. Hmm! <coughs> Anyway, I weighted a half coin on my trusty scale and it turned out to be 11 grams, which nice. feels like a good amount. Then I had some random amount of hydrochloric acid and some hydrogen peroxide as well, to dissolve the metal. As you can see on the equation, this reaction makes some hydrogen gas which will leave as small bubbles. They should form some beautiful nickel chloride which is emerald green. At room temperature, it was way too slow, so I heated up the solution to make it react faster. The entire metal did not dissolve, so I decided to stop now. Nickel is one of the only ferromagnetic metals at room temperature, and that means it's sensible to magnets like iron and that's how I removed it. Moving on, the next step is to precipitate nickel oxalate from the green solution of nickel chloride. To do that, I first have to prepare a solution of oxalic acid. And to do that, I just have to take some crystals and put them in water that I heat up to boiling. And we need to heat because oxalic acid is not very soluble in cold water. Now that the solution is ready, I expected the reaction to be fast and have an immediate precipitate. But I had to wait several hours for everything to precipitate. Nickel oxalate is insoluble in water and will appear as this beautiful light blue suspension. If you see some unreacted oxalic acid precipitating, don't worry, it's fine. Okay. Just hit back on the hot plate before filtering. By the way, did you know that I had a Discord server? If you want to talk chemistry, rockets or anything I show on this channel, join now with the link in the description and in the comments. If I remember to put it there actually. Anyway, after eating the solution to dissolve any leftover oxalic acid, we directly filter using the good old combo of the orange plastic funnel that probably cost 2 cents and the coffee filter. This way we get a nice blue paste. For the last step, we will need dry nickel oxalate, so I put everything in the bottom of a steel can, but you can use a beaker as well. We drive off the moisture of the paste with the hot plate. This is not necessary, but I made a special container for some nickel oxalate, just because I like the color of it. It will go in my collection of transition metal salt. I also have manganese, iron, cobalt, chromium, vanadium, copper and some more. We will now decompose our nickel oxalate into carbon dioxide and pyrophoric nickel. To do that, I made this sort of burner and filled it with some alcohol. The decomposition will be most efficient at around 200 degrees, but here I just used the random temperature from the flame, which I measured to be around 400 degrees. Uh, here you can really see how beautiful the decomposition is. The blue solid first goes in a yellowish transition state, while emitting whistle of carbon dioxide, and then to the final dark grey powder. When I thought that the decomposition was complete, I directly added water to the solid because otherwise it would have the time to decompose in air. The CO2 emissions during the reaction were avoiding this oxidation temporarily. Anyway, I labeled the new fancy container and poured the sludge inside it. It should normally be usable as a catalyst for hydrogenation reactions. 
Now, I wanted to test if I could make the nickel combust directly in air. To do that, I just decomposed another portion of the oxalate and tried to just pour it in the middle of the lab. It didn't work the first time, so I tried again. And then it worked twice, so I think this was a pretty conclusive test. I think I just hit it too much the first one, but anyway, this process seems to work very well. Anyway, that is the end of the video, please like and subscribe, maybe check the discord and watch my other videos. See ya!